Welcome back. Saving the environment is one of the big issues of the 90s, but for many of us, it's hard to know what we can do to really make a difference. And according to my next guest, we should start at home. Karen Christensen has written a book called Home Ecology, and she's here today to help us make our kitchens more environmentally friendly. Hello, Karen. Hello, Susan. What is your theory about going green, about go uh, beginning to go green? Well, everyone has to find a way to begin. It's mm -hmm. a bit overwhelming otherwise. And a lot of people put their attention on recycling because we mm -hmm. hear a lot about it. It's a big word these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm much more interested in pre-cycling and actually reducing the amount of waste we produce. So there's less to organize, there's less to move around. Mm -hmm. So getting rid of it from the start. That's right. Simplifying things mm -hmm. from the beginning. I see. Now I'm going to take some products here that uh, that I think most people purchase on yeah. a weekly basis probably mm -hmm. and you're going to hopefully tell me what's wrong with this. Okay, well here we go. Uh, yeah. Bad, very All bad. Right. Paper towels, paper mm -hmm. made out of, obviously made from trees mm -hmm. um, and a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. You know, considering how many we all true, use true. wrapped in plastic, mm -hmm. um, where, where, what did our grandmothers, mm -hmm. okay, grandfathers use? They used cloth towels. You dry your hands on a cloth towel. You keep a cloth towel handy. You also use for spills. I mean, all the spills that we all mm -hmm. have. So keep we use just uh, cloth instead of paper. Use cloth instead mm -hmm. of paper. Very Great. easy substitute. Great. And also, another one that everybody buys sooner or later mm -hmm. is napkins. Bad. Wrong. Yeah, disposable napkins, mm -hmm. which we get through lots of. I think the reason people, um, you, when I when I talk about cloth napkins, people mm -hmm. always think of this kind, these nice, nice little linen, beautifully starched mm -hmm. and ironed linen napkin, impossible which is, to launder. Mm -hmm. it, impo yeah, you can't get stains <laughs> out of. But what I use instead is these cloth ones, made out of a good thick, hundred percent cotton, very absorbent. They're mm -hmm. great for cleaning and up spills. And they're not spills. expensive. Are they're they? not expensive. And in fact, you spend about, I mean, even for washing, you know, mm -hmm. when you wash and dry them, maybe a fifth what you'd spend on the very cheapest of paper napkins. Mm. They're really wonderful to use, easy to wash, don't have to be ironed. My mother makes, uh, makes these out of old sheets, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. just cuts them and they make wonderful napkins. Also, another one that's really appalling, but I know a lot of us use them, are mothballs. Yeah, because it's terrible to have something destroyed by moths. But here's an old, another old-fashioned alternative is cedar uh -huh. chips. Mm. Wonderful. And that smell. I mean, we and like the smell. The moths hate, they hate it. it. It's terrific. So they they also they also make our clothes smell better. Too. That's right. You don't uh -huh. have to dry clean when you take things out of storage, and you don't These have to walk around smelling yeah. like mothballs. Have you ever walking around someone at the beginning of winter and they smell like a mothball? Yeah. <laughs> what about? Now, this is one that I use one of these every day. Yeah. What can uh -huh. I use instead? Well, you'll be surprised. Instead the of a coffee cotton. filter. Cotton. Huh. Once again, we can substitute something that can be washed, uh -huh. and it's real easy. I mean, you use it. And as this a is something that could be purchased at a uh, nature a store. A lot of natural food mm -hmm. stores now carry these. They're quite easy to obtain, and then you've got a little um, tab so you can hang it up to dry. But you mm -hmm. just rinse, rinse it out very easy. And you know, when you're doing the dishes. Also, they're available are metal ones, correct? There are very nice metal ones. Some uh -huh. gold plated, and then there's some coffee pots that you don't need filters at all. The sort of plunge pot. I see. Yeah. Wonderful. So you, easy. it's easy to give those up. And inexpensive. Yeah. Now, as far as shopping bags go, make a trip to the ah, grocery store. You, you come home, you're stuck with four, maybe five shopping bags. What's an alternative? Well, here's one alternative. We've mm -hmm. got several here. We've got this big, um, heavy canvas bag, and then mm -hmm. we've got a string bag. These are great because they scrunch up to nothing. Mm -hmm. Practically keep them in your pocket. Keep a couple in your glove compartment mm -hmm. of your car so they're handy. So and they expand as you put they things in them? They expand. You'd be... Surprised at just how much they'll hold. They're very sturdy. You can also get them with shoulder straps. And what about those those bags right there for just for fruit? These produce? are for fruit and vegetables. Say you go in and you're buying a lot of apples. Mm -hmm. um, instead of using a plastic bag, mm -hmm. you fill this up with apples, pull the string. It's actually really good to store them in because they get air, they get ventilation, hmm. so your potatoes are not going to go moldy. Wonderful. Kept in the fridge. Again, very easy. Um, as far as children's lunch bags, is bags. One a day during the school, one a school day. years, or for yourself at work. And they're, that not, bad and they're not very sturdy. It's more paper, more mm -hmm. unnecessary paper, more mm -hmm. waste that what's needs a, to be recycled. That's a good here, alternative. Here, here we are. Is a nylon bag. With so it's nylon. shaped just like a bag, only it's made of nylon. It's shaped just like a bag. Nice mm -hmm. Velcro fastener. Very mm -hmm. sturdy. And instead of a lunchbox, mm -hmm. kids can just, they empty it out, fold it up, stick it in their book bag, bring it home. They're not anything like as, they won't forget it the way that, you know, leave That's, it on the, the playground bench. Yeah, such a simple way and su such an easy adjustment to make 
in, in your life. And let's uh, recap this entire list of these very simple ways to start mm. going green. Some of the unfriendly products that we mentioned were paper towels, which can be replaced by natural cloth towels. And also, paper napkins can easy, easily be replaced by cloth napkins. And mothballs are very bad and can be replaced by cedar chips and lavender. And then there's paper coffee filters, which we can replace with gold-plated nylon or cotton filters. Um, we can, instead of using plastic or paper shopping bags, we can use cloth ones, string or canvas. And again, replacing paper with cloth, we can um, use children's cloth lunch bags instead of brown paper. And we want to bring up that all these things, not only are they more environmentally sound, but they're also less expensive. Oh, and yes. They will end up saving quite a lot of money. Altogether. Well, thank you, Karen. Thanks for all thank these you. ways to start going green. Up next, if you love bird watching, you won't want to miss our tips on attracting birds to your yard when Home Matters comes right back. Welcome back to Home Matters. You may not know it, but if you have a garden, birds can be your best friends. With us today is gardening authority, Jeff Ball. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Susan. Why are birds our best friends? It's very simple. Birds eat bugs. And ah. so the more birds you have on your property, the fewer pest insects you're going to have to worry about, whether it be insects in the lawn, in the trees, the shrubs, mm -hmm. just ideas to bring all the birds in that you can. And how do we go about doing that? Well, we can do three things. We can feed the birds all year long. A lot of people stop at winter, so we're mm -hmm. going to feed them a little bit all year long. We're going to give them water, and we're going to give them a house to have little birdies in. Great. Let's take a look at a feeder, and we'll start there. All right, let's get a closer look. Here's one of my favorite feeders. This is not just a regular bird feeder. This has a little extra thing oh. to it. Look at that. It's a cantilever device to keep the squirrels from getting into the bird feeder. Because the weight of the squirrel actually closes the feeder. Squirrels are the bane of all bird feeders. They can wipe out a bird feeder in about 20 minutes. They just love the bird seed. And so that this is designed to, to keep them away. This will cost more. This will be $30, $35. But you can buy them in the garden centers uh, today. And, and uh, they really certainly do the job. But they're not absolutely critical. You can buy a, a more inexpensive feeder, and mm -hmm. the birds will be happy. You'll also struggle with squirrels. What kind of bird seed do we put in this feeder? Well, I just happen to have, believe it or not, look at that. Okay. Huh. The, the cheapy 
bird seed is mm -hmm. just fine. There's no, you know, there's no need to worry about spending lots of money. Right. Our favorite is to buy the cheapy bird seed and a separate bag of sunflower seeds because mm -hmm. the birds really love sunflower seeds. And, and just mix, mix them it together. Half and, half, and, that, and that does the job. That's really all you need to do. Have. Great. Now we know what they eat. What do they drink? Aha. Let's talk about bird baths. Let's okay. take over here. Actually, you know, water is probably more important than the food. Hmm. both in the summer and the winter. People forget about water in the wintertime, and that's when mm -hmm. the birds sometimes really need to have water. So that, that a bird bath, you know, again, as a bird bath is a bird bath, this is one of the prettier ones, but all bird baths should be shallow. Okay, that's right. the secret to a successful bird bath. Uh -huh. And the other secret, of course, is to keep, to water, keep water in, in them. That's right. And this one looks like it could be easily installed. And it just sits right up there, and this is good because the cats can't sit around and, uh -huh. and uh, wait for the birds to come through. How much would this cost? I think about $30, $35 in, a, in one of the better garden centers. Easy. And that at the same time, the little cement ones or little plastic ones do just fine. Mm -hmm. The secret is to keep the water in there. Great. Well, the third thing you spoke of, I believe, was houses. houses. Abodes for birds. Let's take a yes. look at some. Hey Jeff, here's a birdhouse. What's yep. special about this? Actually, it's not terribly special. This happens to be a bluebird house, but mm -hmm. the, any box with a hole in the cover is probably going to do the job. Ah. The issue is going to be the size of the hole. Mm. For little guys like uh, house wrens, chickadees, titmice, the hole should be no bigger than one inch. Okay. Okay, inch and a half for bluebirds. Uh -huh. Anything over two inches, then we're talking about sparrows, starlings, house finches. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think they're trashy, but not me, because even though they're seed eating birds, they have to feed their babies bugs. Ah. Okay, so they're cleaning off the bugs. Yeah. Great. So we might want several different kinds of birdhouses. I've got six different designs around the property to get six different kinds of birds. Wonderful. And is this something that I can buy, I assume, at a, a garden supply? Yeah, you can. Better hardware stores and garden garden centers are going to have them. Anything from 10 to 30 bucks, depending on how fancy. But, you know, you can build one yourself. It's a box. Mm -hmm. The only rule is never paint the inside. That's They'll never use it otherwise. But it's really easy to build uh, and, and you know, cheaper if you do it. Right. So the three things I need to have a lot of birds in my yard are food, water, and shelter. You got it. If you have those three things, you'll have enough birds so it's real unlikely to have an insect problem. Wonderful. Thank you for being with us, Jeff. My pleasure. Stay tuned and we'll be right back with more of Home Matters. Hay fever got you down? Dial 1-800-POLLENS for a report on pollen levels in or around 50 major U.S. cities. Welcome back. 
According to our first guest today, we really have to watch our fat intake, which often means giving up cheese. Well, not anymore. We've discovered a recipe for soft, creamy yogurt cheese made with fat-free or low-fat yogurt, and it's only 19 calories or less per tablespoon. And here's how you make it. You take yogurt, uh, gelatin-free, it has to be gelatin-free yogurt, and you put this coffee filter into a strainer, a mesh strainer that fits inside the bowl. Pour the yogurt inside this, and all you do is just put it in the refrigerator, excuse me, put it in the refrigerator overnight. And the liquid, the purpose of that is the liquid is draining out of it. And overnight, and then it comes out like this, voila, we just happen to have one finished here. And it's the texture, a really soft, creamy texture that can easily be spread on bagels as a substitute for cream cheese. You could also put it on a baked potato for uh, in, in place of sour cream. And you know, cut up some fruit. It also can be used uh, to make a vegetable dip, which I will kind of push this off into here a little bit. And you can add I didn't do a great job of that, but you can add some spices. Uh, first of all, a little bit, maybe just a little olive oil. Mm, give it a little texture there. Lim lemon juice, uh, fresh lemon juice, or just we have some lime juice here today. And a little marjoram I have, fresh marjoram and thyme, just a little bit. And even some garlic, which I love. And uh, get that all over my hands. Nice and garlicky. And just mix that up. and takes on a great texture. It makes a good, a wonderful dip for vegetables. The great news is that Philadelphia cream cheese, our uh, cream cheese has 10 grams of fat per serving, whereas this made with fat-free yogurt has none, has no fat in it. And if made with low fat, it has probably only one calorie per serving. And it is mm, delicious. <laughs> An added bonus is that yogurt with live cultures is loaded with calcium and may help fight colds and hay fever symptoms. For more low-fat yogurt recipes, write to Dannon Healthy Habit Cookbook, Box 7712, Marshfield, Wisconsin, 54419. That wraps it up for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Susan Powell, and I hope we'll see you again next time.